My name is Isbon Holmes. I am uh, the teacher on this course in Geographic Information Systems at the Master level. In the following I will try and give you a brief introduction to the course and the individual lectures of the course so you can have some idea of is it interesting or is it not. So um, first of all let's look at some of uh, the outcomes of the course. What you're going to take with you home. Um, important thing is to note that you'll be looking at your ability to work independently and in that connection create and analyze spatial data. So that's our the key competence that you'll be having bringing with you from the course. Throughout the course you will be obtaining knowledge in what data sets are available, which ones are specifically planning relevant um, in Denmark. We will talk about how to use geodata to model real world objects and phenomena. And we will um, look at how we can use a spatial data analysis to uncover um, complex relationships between different types of objects. Um, skills, yeah, basically, uh, that's what you what you can do afterwards. So you'll be able to uh, harvest data. Got to say, okay, where can I find interesting data? What elements are in there? You will be able to um, model real-world phenomena, objects, um, through geodata data, and you will be able to analyze and communicate about spatial relationships. So that's you know the overall outcome if you wish. Um, if you look at the program for the course, um, it's a five ETS course, consists of eight lectures. Um, the times, dates, and locations of these lectures you can see that on on Kuzuk and um, if uh, you already signed up for the course it's also here on Moodle, so check that out. Um, in the following I will talk you through each of these individual eight lectures, what we're going to talk about in the lectures. Um, this is also because you know, I have a program for it, but if there are interests or it turns out that we might want to do something else, well, I may open to suggestions and try to change um, the contents of the course to meet your wishes. So, but basically my preliminary program, if you wish, looks something like that. Um, and in the first lecture, it reveals to out with what is geodata. We'll talk about um, attribute data, that is the data that describes, we call it sometimes, uh, the what data. That is, what is the name of a specific location, how many people live at a specific location, that type. We will be talking about both qualitative and quantitative data of the attribute type. We will talk about temporal data when, if you wish, when was this observation, or when were there so and so many people present at this location. And of course the most important part of it is the spatial data, the where. Where is the road that is called this or that, or where do we have this and that amount of accidents. Then we will have to talk about what is special about spatial data or geodata. What is it that makes sets it apart from any other type of data? We have special software, we have lots of special things. Um, so what are those things that make it special? And finally, we'll also have to talk about how we can reference a location on the surface of the Earth. So coordinate systems, how do they function? the magic, if you wish, of bringing data together from different sources, but because there is knowledge of coordinate systems, all the data bring are brought together and aligned correctly. So, that's that. Also in this introduction, we will have to talk about what is a Geographic Information System, a GIS, so, and which services does it deliver. We will talk about different types of specially enabled software, that is, software that can work with geodata. There are lots of things from Google Earth, Mapinfo, even Excel, and to those much more specialized softwares 
that we've been working with, such as ArcGIS. And moving on from there, we'll look at what ArcGIS, how the user interfaces, what are the things you can do, where to find things in the software, and we'll finish off by accessing data from ArcGIS. So getting our first data into the software so we can start doing the fun stuff. In uh, lecture two, we'll be focusing on creating and manipulating data. So uh, how to create and extract data. So typical situation is that we have large national data sets of all buildings, all roads, all manholes, all lamp posts throughout the entire of Denmark. Typically you don't want to use all of that, so you will extract some of it. All of the roads that are one-way roads or are within the distance of five kilometers from the main station coming or whatever you need. So creating a subset, extracting that from the main data set, creating your own data set from that that you then can start working with. Then you can start manipulating the data, um, look, changing different elements of the attribute, so how many people live in the municipality, the width of the road, the names, one-way direction, or whatever we need of uh, things we need to change, registering things that are not there already, such as uh, green roofs or whatever. And finally, we will have a look at how to create and edit spatial data. So that's the locational data. So how to create a new building, so drawing the outline of the building, or how to create a new infrastructural element, a roadblock, flower pots, whatever you need to change the urban furniture uh, in order to create whatever you are working with. So that's uh, lecture two, it's on creating and manipulating data. In lecture three, we will focus on overlay analysis and workflows. Um, Early analysis are analysis of spatial relations between objects. So, uh, which planning zones cover the area occupied by specific buildings? So, we can see, okay, what am I allowed to do at this location? We'll also look at, it could be all natural things, which uh, habitats are threatened by a new motor rail proposal or who lives within a flooding zone, or lots of that type of things. Basically, it's the question, what is inside what? And from those very simple analysis, we'll start talking about workflows. The thing about working with spatial data is that there's really not many and not very complex analysis tools there. But you can take those individual tools and combine them to rather complex workflows. That's where it really gets tricky. So um, looking at how to create these workflows, there's a graphical tool for it that we'll so we'll learn how to draw a workflow, how to implement it so we can document what we've been doing or rechange it without having to do too much work. So ONA analysis and workflows, that's lecture three. Lecture four is about continuous surfaces. Until now, in this course, we'll be talking about objects, a building, a road, and so on. But there are lots of things that are best modeled as a continuous surface. Temperature, elevation, uh, distance to green areas. Um, all of these things are continuous in their nature. And um, continuous layers, or things like a phenomena, they have their own ways of being represented, so we're looking at how they can be represented and what analysis possibilities are of things that are continuous. So, lecture 4 about continuous surfaces. Lecture 5 is about interpolation and surface flows. If you look at surface flows first, they have uh, become, um, might be wrong to say popular, but they're being much more used uh, because of changes to if not the climate, then at least the pattern of participation. So, so when it rains, it rains more and it rains in local areas. And the management of rainwater 
has become very important in urban areas. So terms like blue spot analysis and um, ways of getting rid of the rainwater are very important planning issues. So um, we'll look at how these types of analysis can be done based on a continuous surface of the elevations. Where will the water run when it starts raining? Where will it accumulate? Many of these continuous surfaces that we've been talking about both in the previous lecture and in this lecture are generated from point observations. So measurement of air pollution, noise, whatever, temperature, things that we have made a measurement at one location but want to know what is in between the locations. What was, how much air pollution do we see in between or do we expect to find in between our measurements. So that process of calculating what's in between is called interpolation and that's the last part of lecture five. Lecture six will be looking at distance and proximity. Um, you might say distance, what's What's the problem there? Well, well, distance is not just measuring the distance between two points. Um, when you're talking about doing analysis of distance, we are typically talking about things like um, how much longer or shorter was the average distance to the train station or supermarket or whatever uh, become for the people living in a specific area if we train or we change this or that infrastructure. So, if we include a bridge or some water or make a highway that people can't cross over, what, what does that mean for their ability to move? How, how, how much does it change their moving distance, their travel distance if you wish, to get to whatever they want to get to? So distance is much smaller than this thing looking at uh, points, but also um, looking at how many um, people live within a specific walking distance, say 10 minutes from green areas. It's a political measurement that often comes up that so and so many percent of the population have to have access to green areas within this and this walking distance. So how do we do this calculation? So that's again there what we'll be looking in in lecture 6. Um, Lecture 7 is about spatial pattern analysis. We are specifically interested in two types of um, spatial pattern, namely uh, clusters and hotspots. Clusters are areas where we have a high density or high occurrence of point observations. So for instance, uh, where we have many occurrences or many incidents of specific type of crime such as burglaries or violence or pickpockets or whatever. Um, but also other things such as observations of where we have tags belonging to a specific football club. The other type of, uh, hot, of um, spatial patterns that I've been interested in is hotspots. Hotspots are what we might in everyday go call ghettos. So where do we have areas of some high value of a property compared to a neighborhood? So where do we have areas with a high income or where do we have areas where many people go to the doctors. So understanding that type of patterns can be useful to understand okay what is the underlying process or are there any form of ghettofications going on. In the eighth and final lecture we will be talking about some of those main planning relevant daily Danish data sets. So where can we find them? What can be used to and how are they structured. So navigating the key elements of data related to Danish spatial planning. I hope that I feel this little short video introduction have answered many of your questions relating to the course and its content. If you have further questions um, please be free to email me and uh, and look at it and I'll come back and say okay what can we do and what can't we do. Thank you.